Hey guys, it's Darwin, and today we're bringing up a topic from the past, backpacking quilts, and if they're right, for you. So almost three years ago now, I made a video called Sleeping Bags versus Quilts, where I talked about why I made the switch and some of the pros to using a quilt on the trail over a sleeping bag. Ever since then, I've hiked over 5,000 miles and used a bunch of different quilts on the trail, and still, to this day, I get tons of questions and comments on the video and in my email about quilts, the benefits and the drawbacks. And since I feel like there's a bunch of misleading information and a lot of concerns that people still have, I figured I would finally make a much requested update video, a refresher course, if you will. Now, real quick for all you folks out there that might be new to backpacking and have no clue what I'm talking about, a backpacking quilt is essentially just like a sleeping bag. So you're gonna use it at night as a cover to keep you warm in your tent. The main differences are a quilt usually has no back to it. So they're completely open, allowing your pad to act as the back of the sleeping bag and create insulation. Quilts are usually much lighter and they pack down much smaller. They have no hood like their mummy bag counterparts. And a lot of backpacking quilts are convertible, allowing you to open up the foot box and make it one big flat blanket so you can use it in multiple applications. Now, why would someone like me use a quilt over a sleeping bag on the trail? Well, number one, it does pack down much smaller, so it takes up less room in your pack. They tend to weigh a lot less because, well, there's obviously less material. And the biggest reason for me is because I toss and turn a lot when I sleep, and I feel like the quilt allows me much more room than being confined to a mummy bag. All right, now that we're all on the same page, I want to tackle an issue right off the bat that I see all the time with new quilt users and something that people looking at getting a quilt need to keep in mind when deciding to make the switch, and that is using a proper sleeping pad. Because a quilt has no back to it, which means no insulation on the underside, it requires a sleeping pad with a good R value to create an insulation barrier between you and the ground. Now, for an example, if you're using a 10 degree quilt, but your sleeping pad only has an R value of 2.6, chances are you're probably still gonna be cold on a 20 degree night. It's not the quilt that's making you cold, it's the low R value of the pad and allowing the ground to suck the heat right out of you. One of the most common sleeping pads I see a lot of hikers using on the trail is the Thermarest Z-Lite. Uh, it's because you don't have to blow it up, you can put it right on the top of your pack, and it's pretty easy to use. However, it only has an R value of 2.6, so it's great for summer camping and maybe late spring, but if you're in those colder temps, it's probably not gonna be the best choice to use with a quilt. Now, obviously this all depends on what type of hiker you are and how warm you sleep. So I consider myself a pretty warm sleeper, and most of the times I use the Thermarest Neo Air X Lite, which has an R value of 3.2, and I use it with my 20 degree enlightened equipment Enigma. Now, I've had this thing down to probably 12 degrees, 13 degrees when I was in the high Sierra last year on the PCT. But if you're a colder sleeper, you might wanna use something like the Neo Air X-Therm that has an R value of 5.7. So I guess in conclusion, if you are a foam pad user, using a quilt might not be the best for you and just sticking with a traditional sleeping bag might be a better choice. The next common concern and misinformation that I see all the time are comments like, this does not work for a side sleeper or a tosser and turner. If you sleep like the dead, a quilt is great. If you're like me and move in your sleep, a quilt is useless. Not true. One of the main reasons I made the switch to the quilt is because I do toss and turn a ton when I'm sleeping at night on the trail. And I'm a side sleeper. Most of the times I sleep on my right side, but throughout the night, I do turn over to my left side, back to my right, back to my left. And when I was in a traditional mummy bag, I always felt way too confined. I would roll around and get tangled up, and then in the middle of the night, I'd get up and have to unzip it and kind of correct myself and zip it back up. But with a quilt, I have much more room. And the trick to that is getting a quilt that is properly sized for you. So it took me three quilts to figure out that I need a quilt that is wide and long because I move so much. Wide because if I roll over onto my side, I wanna make sure I'm not pulling up the sides of the quilt and letting draft in, 
and long because I'm 6'1", and I wanna make sure that if I pull the quilt over my head on a chilly night, that my feet aren't gonna to touch the toe box, breaking that insulation barrier and the heat that I have going on around my feet. And one of the cool things about going with a quilt like uh, Enlightened Equipment or a Z-Pax or a Catabatic or a UGQ is most of these quilts are custom made to your order so you can decide if you want it long, if you want it narrow, how much fill you want, so you can customize it to your body. So it just comes down to doing your research and figuring out what company is gonna make the best size for you. Another comment I get all the time is quilts are expensive. Now that can be true sometimes. Some companies quilts are more expensive than others and if you're custom building a quilt and you're doing a 950 fill and a special material and getting it printed and all these crazy customized things that you can do, they can get quite expensive. But some of the most popular quilt companies like UGQ and Enlightened Equipment actually have pretty cheap quilts to start off with that you can't customize. They're called on the shelf quilts. And even some of the custom quilts that you can get from like Enlightened Equipment, if you look at something from one of the bigger brands, we'll say Thermarest, it's actually cheaper to go with the Enlightened Equipment quilt over something that's comparable that Thermarest makes. So for an example, the quilt that I use most of the times is a 20 degree long wide Enigma, and this guy cost me $355. If I wanted to go with a bigger company, say Big Agnes, and go with one of their mummy bags that are pretty equivalent as far as warmth, width, length, and weight, I would be looking at something like the Hitchens UL20 that cost $570. So in the long run, quilts really aren't any more expensive than some of the bigger brand mummy bags that you can find on the market. And if you really wanted to go with a super budget option, you could go with the Outdoor Vitals 30 degree quilt on Amazon for $190 just to try it out. But really making the investment and spending 355 bucks on this last year and then basically sleeping in it every night on the trail for over 4,000 miles was a pretty good investment. And the last concern that I see come up all the time, and it's probably the most common concern, is how do you keep from rolling off your pad and ending up with an exposed back? I would like to see how you attach your quilt to your mat. Lots of worries about drafts coming into the quilt at night. So if it's a very chilly night, and I know it's gonna be drafty and stuff, I'll just simply use my pad straps. Most quilts on the market, if not all, from Enlightened Equipment, to Z-Packs, to UGQ, to even the Outdoor Vitals quilt, come with a pad strap. So when you're using a thicker pad with a proper R value, like the Neo Air x Lite or anything that has a little girth to it, they make pad straps that will actually go around your pad, and then the sides of the quilt actually have little buckles, like, this that attach to that strap where it will come down and basically create a cocoon with the quilt and the sleeping bag trapping in all that warmth at night. But honestly, most nights I just take the two strap ends and I clip them together and then it almost becomes kind of like a sleeping bag but still using the top of the sleeping pad to create the warmth. So it's all about cinching down the pad properly and positioning those straps to make sure that when you're rolling and tossing and turning at night that the quilt is not gonna come up, let drafts in, and if it's cinched down properly, you're not gonna roll off your pad. Uh, in the 5,000 miles that I've hiked now with quilts, I've never come off my pad in the middle of the night and had an exposed back and slept cold. It's all about making the quilt and the pad one complete system to trap that warmth in. So, it's 2019, do you still feel the same way, Darwin? Yep, after three years of using nothing but quilts on the trail, like I said back in that early video, I can't imagine going back to a sleeping bag. In the long run, I just get better sleep with a quilt. And over those 5,000 miles, I've used it in various temperatures and conditions, high elevation, low elevation, and most of the time, a 20 degree, long, wide quilt does me just fine. And I'll hold to my previous statement. The quilt is definitely won me over, and to be honest, I don't think that I'll ever buy a mummy bag again. All that being said, everyone is different and everyone's comfort levels are different. So using a quilt works for me, 
but it doesn't mean that it's gonna work for you. It all comes down to trying things out in the field and figuring out what's gonna be the best for you and promote the best sleep on the trail. So what sleep system are you using on the trail? Are you a quilt person? Or are you still rocking a mummy bag? Leave me something down below and let us know your thoughts. If you found any value in this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And as always guys, thanks for watching.